excited about the victory um, from this past weekend. Uh, I know we had a chance to talk about it after the game, but really felt like it was a team win. Um, you know, obviously starts with, with getting a shutout on defense. Uh, I thought a lot of guys played well. I thought we tackled real well. Um, and then ultimately, you know, played a lot of guys to contribute to the end result of, uh, you know, shutting out a really good football program. Offensively, while it did take us a little while to put points on the board, you know, we were, we were pretty consistent throughout, uh, you know, with our guys up front and their play. Uh, we were able to hit some, some, some play action passes in the, in the passing game. Um, and ultimately just get, really got them off balance. Uh, I think both with our ability to run it and, and then get, uh, get Sean, you know, out of, out of pocket at times. Um, yeah, it was a really good blend of, of the outside zone in particular and then the, uh, the play action off it. Um, so really pleased with how our offensive line, I guess, when you cut through it, how they played. Uh, they're playing at a, at a high rate right now, playing with a uh, uh, really good pad level. And, um, you know, we have an athletic group that now I think is added a little bit more physical nature to the way they go about things. So, you know, uh, special teams wise, um, we limited, you know, the most prolific return man in the country, um, gave him the one opportunity and, uh, and when we did have to cover, we covered real well. And, you know, on the flip side, um, you know, the biggest play for us uh, was you know tackling them on the fake punt um, as far as just the return game goes but that was a big play uh, at that point in time that was kind of the last ditch for them and then we were able to score the next play offensively uh, concerning with with the missed kicks uh, for sure and um, you know that did pile up on Brendan a little bit um, but what I did appreciate um, you know on three of those missed kicks he had to go back out and kick off right after and and knocked it out of the end zone on each one of those. So we'll work through that. Uh, still got uh, tons of faith in his ability to do what he's been doing to this point and um, we'll move forward in that regard. So in front of us now, yeah, homecoming, an opportunity to, to play a team that's that scored 150 points the last two weeks um, and, and, and really is, has got a lot of good players, has, a, has an explosive um, way about him on offense. Hit a return in their, in their own right last week, um, you know, and I think they're continuing to find themselves um, as these weeks have gone along defensively. I, I know if you just purely look at their scores, uh, you know, that's all over the map. You know, starting with the game with Oregon, um, I think they did play Wyoming, um, you know, who's three and one, you know, to a uh, closer game certainly than, than the previous one with with Oregon. But you know, as they went worked through these last two weeks, in particular, conference row to be up. Uh, like they were at halftime against uh, Cal Poly, that was very impressive. So we got our work cut out just to go back to reset again, um, not to get not get too high after a victory like that. Uh, come back, go to work, and that's that's where we're at right now. As far as uh, you know, anything on the injury front, um, you know, leave Tommy off for now. I think he's continuing to progress, but that's probably how we see it for this week. Um, I think Scott Trey Humphrey was one that went out of the game. He's continuing to be evaluated as we work through the week. I know things changed with Simeon Woodard uh, through the week last week. Uh, he did practice. Um, so we'll find out more about his availability as this week goes along. But but ultimately got out of that game pretty, pretty healthy, all things considered. So that's where we're at. Um, excited about the opportunity to be back home. You know, we have a home by home now, so we won't go on the road for a while. I'm really looking forward to getting, getting in front of our fans again come this Saturday. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Um, I guess just one more on the injury front. Is Ty still a week or two away from that one? Or? Well, uh, he's practicing this week. And what, what does that yield for Saturday? I didn't put him on the depth chart because um, I think we don't know yet. Um, but he is practicing this week, and uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. Sure. Um, and then I know you mentioned some of the Look at the tape from Weaver. Is there is there anything else that kind of stuck out after looking at the tape of that game? Well, I thought we, you know, we withstood some things on defense. Um, you know, they made a few plays here and there, um, got themselves in some second and shorts. And I just appreciated how we battled. I think ultimately they were three of seventeen on on third down, and that wasn't all because they were in second and long. You know, we did some really good things on second down to to push them back in a couple of occasions to. You know, then on third and short, uh, we made it complicated. I know they converted a couple fourth and shorts, but ultimately I think they were two or six on fourth down too. So, you know, our guys just, just playing in the moment, I guess, was the big thing. You know, a lot of times you can let that 
big gain maybe on first down. If even it's eight, nine yards in your second one, kind of let that affect you on the next play. We didn't do that. Um, you know, and they made a couple plays in that third quarter that, you know, pushed them into our territory. The game's still just 20 to nothing. Um, I thought we really uh, excelled in that, uh, that, that sequence. Um, so yeah, I think situations before where we maybe let one thing lead to the other, I don't think that happened to us on Saturday and that's something we can really build upon. But I, I know we're playing, uh, we're playing physical on defense, we're playing really fast and that's, you know, that's where we wanna be. And then, you know, that whole uh, mindset of playing together and trusting one another. Um, I don't have to make the play if someone else can, if I do my job, I think that's, that's sh shining through um, to this point in the season. And then I don't know if you saw um, you know, Sean being named Offensive Player of the Week uh, this week, just I guess about his performance. Like the... You know, it was, uh, I think it was very impactful. Uh, you throw for two, you run for two, um, and, and you make uh, a lot of plays. And there was a lot of unscripted plays, I think, within that as well. I thought there was really some good. I think he can continue to, you know, keep coming in the, the overall, overall game. Uh, you know, I think, I think passing wise there were some good things but there were some things where I think better suited to throw the ball than to maybe pull it down and run on a couple plays I you know we drove in a position to get points on the board before halftime and even within that sequence there was some some good and some um, not so good you know I, I think you know he can he can be physical we don't need our quarterbacks to be physical and that's that you know there's a real balance there um, he doesn't need to make all the plays when he's out there and he, he didn't. I mean, he made some. Um, so I think continuing to to hone him in, um, we'll try to keep, you know, attempting to do, um, understanding that he's going to go out there and be able to make plays that a lot of people can at the same time. Peter, how about his leadership role? I guess you know, being at the helm for two straight games. So uh, just his leadership role on the field. Yeah, I think uh, he's got tremendous leadership qualities. Um, I think he's a guy that, you know in year two now that our, our guys have been around more and more. Um, they look up to him, you know, being elected captain was representative of that. And, you know, I think they see more than anything, he was a guy that's gonna compete like crazy. So, you know, I, I think uh, that's a unique thing. We have two quarterbacks and we have two captains that are quarterbacks. So you don't have this dip like, you know, some teams would if they go from this captain quarterback to then they go to a young guy. That's pretty dramatic as far as the leadership goes. Um, the void as far as the leadership goes but in fact we probably stay very similar um, two different two different leaders in their own right two different players but you know both guys that have garnered a lot of respect from their teammates and I, I think that really helps um, beyond just the playmaking you, you mentioned uh, kind of some 49ers influence on the offense Saturday I guess can you speak to it all to he's a 49ers fan I, I know that <laughs> Sound like um, is too. <laughs> coach Husher is not a 49ers fan I think he's a fan of what they do um, but yeah, I mean, I think you look at um, teams like the 49ers and obviously the Dolphins now, which is all, all one and the same, um, the Rams going back. I think they have that blend of the under, under center zone running game with, with the play action that it can be very prolific if you have the right pieces um, to put in place. And uh, yeah, so I mean, just, just how we looked um, with being under center, with with the tighter split receivers, with the motion, I think it probably blended that. And you know, if, uh, if there was a little influence, I probably was to encourage Sean to say, "This is this is your team here. We're emulating your team." But uh, a good good couple teams, if it's the 49ers, the, the Dolphins, um, to you know to try to pick some things from. Yeah, has Tommy worked at all under center, center or is that is he just kind of gun kind of specific? No, he has. We have. I mean, it's. Um, uh, and you gotta, you gotta be a little bit more deliberate within the week. But whether it's spring ball or um, fall camp, we work we work under center enough where we should be able to to do it. But you know, Sean would have a lot more experience. Um, you know, a lot of guys come out of high school and they maybe haven't ever been under center, and that was the the case primarily for Tommy. Um, but that's that's more and more the case these days. So it, it is a it's a little bit of a lost art to be able to to take a snap and get away from center because that sounds really simple, but that's, um, it's not second nature to these guys. So um, that being said, I think Sean's um, experience and comfortability with it um, does make a difference when you can implement it as much as we did in the game plan.
Um, you mentioned the explosive nature of that Portland State offense. I guess anything specific that stands out from him, that would stand out from him. Well, I think right now, you know, these last couple games, uh, you start with their quarterback. Um, you know, he's doing a really good job of, of making plays, both with his arm uh, and his and his feet. Um, very capable as a, a passer, and he's got some big targets to throw to. Uh, you know, they haven't. Yeah, you know, have guys that have all kinds of receptions. I think their leading leading receivers are eleven and eight as far as that goes. As far as you know, and we're four games in, but big targets and guys that can get open and. You know, a good blend of uh, um, the RPO game, um, similar to a lot of things that we have within our offense. Uh, so, you know, they can be right by uh, the decision, if he's making good decisions as far as whether he should pull it or whether he should throw it or whether he should get on the perimeter. So, you know, there's definitely some elements that will be very challenging. Uh, and then they're running a bunch of running backs, uh, you know, guys with really high yards per carry right now. I think they... They have a three that are running over six per carry, um, and then the quarterbacks in the same, the same mix. So, you know, they're doing, they got the capability to do quite a bit. I think that's what you see. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the four games, they've, they can, they can pose a lot of problems for you, and they have athletes that, uh, that can execute. And a similar question: What have you seen from their defense? You know, we did play them last year, so thinking back to playing them in twenty one, um, a complete overhaul as far as what they're doing. They were, they were desert swarm flex defense um, back that year. Uh, now they're more traditional four down play coverage. Um, you know, big up front, big enough up front, active up front, uh, linebackers that can run, um, make plays there. They, you know, they haven't necessarily taken uh, and been as nearly as aggressive, say, as a Weber in their coverage game. Doesn't mean they wouldn't against us. Um, more zone, but you know. I, I'm sure the thought process is is to keep the ball in front of them, and that's that's kind of how they play. Um, make it hard for the the offense, make the offense ultimately, you know, shoot shoot itself in its foot. So, you know, can appreciate where they're at. I think they're they, you know, not having played them last year, and if you just purely look at their their schedule, um, I think it was it was up and down. Um, but when the ups there, they 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 were good good enough last year. We saw them on film a bunch, and then you know, now this year it feels like okay, you start out with Oregon. That's that's a tough task for anybody um, going to road to Wyoming and, and that game didn't get away from them by any means and then you know to have the 91 to nothing game um, I don't care who you play um, that was that you know I think at the end of three quarters and then to go into conference play and do what they did it's it's impressive how have you felt about John Johnson's performance so far through four weeks yeah I really like what John's brought uh, you know we we I've said it, I think we had the ability to play more man coverage and a lot of that is because of the addition of John. Um, I think the improvement of the guys that have been around, the addition of Andrew Pauldrill. Uh, but John's, you know, I think continuing to be a guy that we can lean on. I, I know from the corner position, he had the, the most snaps the other night and, uh, you know, I think, you know, came up with a really strong effort. So, you know, that whole group, um, the corners, let's just start with that group has, has played Played improved football and it's it's personnel, it's experience uh, of some of the guys that have been around, but uh, it was something we definitely needed. Yeah, I mean the depth you mentioned throughout fall camp that you were pleased with that, and then I think it, other than the first game, you know, haven't been fully healthy at that position. Uh, but just how pleased have you been with the guys yeah, you've been able? Yeah, you know, play? and we've we went at it and played um, you now five guys through the course of these games. Um, haven't had Simeon in the last couple of weeks. Didn't have Miles at um, South Dakota State, but yeah, I think. Uh, and didn't have Andrew at South Dakota State either. So um, John's been consistent, um, and I think we've played at a, a rate different than um, we did last year. And part of it is we're just we're, we're able to play more man coverage, and that's you know if when you can do that, um, you're gonna you're gonna highlight a corner more than you are playing zone coverage, and um, you're gonna put them in tougher situations at the same time. So I think they've stepped up so far. Um, Trayton was a guy that a lot of people, including yourself, said had a big fall camp. Mm -hmm. He had a you know, couple touchdowns this last week. What have you kind of seen from him during this early stretch? Well, we found him a couple more times, uh, but he has been really consistent. You know, and, and the nature of our, our first three games, um, he wasn't targeted but a couple times. Um, and we'll have to keep finding ways, you know, within the game plan to to highlight him and Derek. Um, I think they're, they're both – Obviously, I think capable beyond that, you know, more than capable receivers. 
um, and they run really good routes. And that was really, you know, both his touchdowns were on his ability to lose his defender. Um, and he did a great job of that. And then Derek at the same time, you know, we need to find ways to get, get him the ball. And, and that's, you know, we had whatever, how many times we threw the ball, you know, we, we scrambled on another probably eight plays. So you end up, you know, in 60 some plays, um, you're upper 20s as far as pass calls, but you throw it in the high teens, it's misleading sometimes. But, you know, um, those two guys, you know, however many times we, or whatever they end up with receptions, I guess, they need to be, you know, a conscious thought in our mind as we, we prepare each week because they're both guys that can, uh, can separate and make big plays. And I know Derek has been such a, you know, such a force in, in the run blocking or just blocking in general. I guess Trayton kind of in that, that similar mode, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, he's playing more in line. And, um, yeah, he's, he's done a really good job so far this year. And that's, you know, I probably spoke more to the the past side of things in fall camp, but it was really how he was doing, you know, against guys like Brody and Ben. And, you know, um, and that's such a good the advantage we have is when, when you're a good player, but you can go against a good player every day and practice in spring and fall, it makes you that much better. And, you know, um, without spring, I think Trayton really, you know, I think that's where he felt like, boy, he really continued to come along. And, and, and that's why I think I spoke like I did through the course of fall camp is because it wasn't just on the pass side, it was on the blocking side as well. Both of his touchdowns took a while to develop, but I just can also just talk about the dominance of the O-line. You know, with those two plays, with the run game, yeah. you know, Coach L. Johnson and what they're doing there. Yeah, I think it all works together. You know, when when you got a defense, a defensive line in run mode um, as versus pass rush mode, it does make it a lot easier to, to pass block because that becomes this transition as that play is going on. So you really don't even get a pass pass rush. And I think our guys are making those run plays in, in those either out of pocket play action or in play act, in pocket play action look very similar. And when you can get and get a defense guessing on its heels you can get linebackers running like crazy um, it's it's going to allow you to pop some runs like we did and it's going to allow for some big plays in the passing game and those big plays in the passing game you know the couple to, to Trayton I know there's one to Aiden Garrigan a couple misses that still have to make them wonder you know we got behind the defense a couple times and we didn't complete it and then Sean's you know I think he probably had three four runs off of those out of pockets as well including one of his touchdowns so you know, it's it's it starts with the the O line being able to block the run, but then make everything else look uh, you know very similar. And Julius Davis dominated you know the run game as well. So I guess just talking about him, the role he's um, kind of come into as yeah. you know a new guy. Yeah, I think we we brought Julius in with high hopes, um, high expectations, and you know I think some things flash through fall camp, but we don't tackle a lot, so it's you know it's hard to really get a gauge. But as we've gotten into you know, the season now, uh, on each one of the Saturdays, he's proven to be a guy that's tough to tackle. And he's got, uh, I think, really good instincts um, as far as his tempo goes and how he sees things. You know, you don't look back and at the end of the game saying that Julius missed this one, missed he's missed a few maybe, but he's he's been pretty spot on as far as how he sees it. Um, and then his ability to get into the secondary um, consistently has been, you know, as much as anything, his ability to make the first guy miss either at the first level or the second level. So, you know, we need to keep uh, giving him opportunities. I think he's proven very worthy of that. And, you know, uh, I think that whole group, you know, just looks a lot different than, you know, what we had for the bulk of the last season. Um, a couple of plays that still, uh, Nolan made the tackle on the first play from scrimmage that seemed like it stopped a, a pretty big game. And then uh, Ben was um, just stayed kind of put on the edge on the, um, on the reverse. Yeah. Um, it seemed like just the discipline and the being in the right place was kind of constant throughout. Yeah, the game. I think I think yeah, doing your job and then being able to do it really effectively, being able to play fast. Um, you know, even the fake punt, they had some blockers, but Mikado Riley and Zach Cruz came out of nowhere um, to snuff that out. I guess so. Yeah, I think it's our guys being very disciplined, um, trusting one another, and then being able to, you know, when given the opportunity to make a play, because Nolan's was not an easy play, and that that beginning of the game can look a lot different um, if that's all of a sudden a 40 yard run as opposed to I think it was an eight yard run. Um, it had the makings uh, of a bigger run and Nolan made a really good play. So we made more plays in space, I think in this game than we had in even the previous couple. Um, and that's a good sign because I think Weber State skill is, is really good. Um, Bankson had proved that in particular in the games preceding. So 
Um, we need to keep doing that. You know, I think uh, your confidence grows in, in, in what you're doing, how you're able to do it as you put performances like that together. So you know, we, should, uh, we should be able to build off of that, um, but not lose sight of what kind of got us there. It's to your point, it's, it's being disciplined and, and then just trusting what you see and doing it on and on. Um, I guess uh, with, with Danny having to miss a half because of the turning ball, McCade probably at least I guess step into the starting. Yeah, player. yeah, McCade will uh, will step in like he did in the game. Um, you know, I think we'll you know we even that, that backup role beyond McCade, so that fourth guy in the mix um, um, was Neil Daly. Now Neil's been out and, and, and will continue to be out. I don't know if we've talked about that, but um, some of those things go unnoticed. But Cole Bullock. Uh, stepped in and I think both of the last two games has done some good things. He's still a guy that you know is learning um, learning our defense kind of on the fly um, and but he can tackle the football when he's in the right place and you know, so we'll see how that goes through the course of the week whether that gets cool in any kind of rotation um, in that first half but I think he's made some some real strides the last couple weeks. Um, and I guess just Looking at that targeting call, is there anything else? Is there anything that kind of stood out to you? Um, I guess watching it. Well, I, I, you know, it's it's something that, um, though that rule, it, it's it's obviously well intentioned, and, and the execution of that rule, where it doesn't have to be called on the field, it can be called up in the booth, is well intentioned. Um, I don't think all targetings are necessarily egregious as far as the intent, and I think that would be one of them, but the elements of targeting were there and it was it was called and, and we'll deal with the consequences. Anything else in the room? Coulter, do you have anything? Yeah, hey Coach, can you hear me okay? Yep, gotcha. Uh, a couple things for you. I know I asked you about the communication of the defensive line, but I wanted to follow up on that a little bit. It seems like that's such a key element to what they do, especially just kind of the back and forth and just working as a unit together. So what are some of the factors that have helped them have that great communication? How important is that for you guys to keep those those keys? Well, you know, it's funny that they don't necessarily communicate a lot, but they have to be on the same page, which right. is a form of communication, I suppose. Um, you know, so it's, it's our, our coaches, um, you know, putting them in, in position to run games, you know, where two guys are working in tandem and, and maybe exchanging responsibility. And we're doing that, I think, really well, both on when it's relative to the run game um, and then, you know, on, on passing situations as well. I, I think we're not, uh, we're not a team that's just going to take our four guys and just run them forward a whole lot. Um, but when we do that, we have to have gap integrity and, you know, our, our guys behind them have to be well positioned to play the right gaps. Um, and then when we're moving, it's all tied together at the same time. So I, I think that's, you know, the one thing we're doing up front is understanding that that group um, does not have to light a stat sheet to be effective. You know, the D line, you know, obviously you wanna, you wanna get tackles for loss and sacks and those things. But if you're doing your job consistently, someone else is getting the glory a lot of times, and that's okay. Um, when a D lineman tries to do too much and might play out of his gap, then we have real problems. Um, so those type of situations, and that's maybe how I took your question the most the other night, is we are playing really disciplined and really hard in that regard of just doing our job and doing it in a real physical way, um, really trying to affect the line of scrimmage. And a lot of times that means someone else is maybe getting credit for the tackle, but I think collectively that group is uh, um, pretty dialed in on being where they're supposed to be and uh, doing it in a pretty effective uh, manner. Yeah, I guess that's what I was asking is how do you play so many line games and still stay fundamentally sound in the gap sack? Because it seems like you guys are doing both those things pretty dang well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's experience, it's trust in, it's trust in the call, you know, I, I think uh, um, and trusting and seeing it play out, I guess, at the same time, you know, so I, I think everybody's nature is, is the see ball, find ball, um, no matter what position you're playing. But in the grand scheme of things, that's not how we play defense. It's I got a job to do. Um, I need to do it as well as I can. If that provides me an opportunity to make a play on the ball, great. If it provides someone else the opportunity to make a play on the ball, just as well. I, and I think we're really really dialed in on that right now um, you know and, and 
and, and those guys work really hard to, uh, to like, let's say, to, to perfect those movements. Um, and we're, we're certainly not perfect, but trying to do those things as, as best they can. And then I, I think our coaches are doing a really good job of, of putting them in the best scenario is to be disruptive um, relative to what the other team's scheme is. You know, and there's a real, there's a real art to that. Um, you know, so, so Coach Howe and Coach John baptiste um, along with uh, Coach Daly and Coach Garza, I mean, they all get credit for, let's see, how does this all fit together? You know, those D-line coaches, um, their job is to, to really fit those movements to the calls on the back end. Um, and I just, I think we're doing a really good job of that right now. We have guys that can, are capable at the same time. You have to have good players to do the things we're doing. So it's, it's twofold, but then those guys have to really be bought into just doing their job. And, and not worrying about what that stat sheet looks like at the end of the day. I've been impressed with your whole team's sort of perspective on being part of something bigger than themselves, but for the defensive linemen, they talk a lot about upholding that sort of legacy of Montana State's defensive line. So, I mean, how impressed are you by that element? How, how important is that for them as a group? Yeah, I, I'm real impressed because I, I think they understand that our, our success um, begins and ends with, with that group. Um, and that's an every down deal. And, you know, it's not just four guys, it's ideally eight to 10 guys contributing to that. Um, and, you know, they've had some really good influences, I think, going back uh, in their time. They talk about that, you know, I, I, yeah, I think there's definitely a standard that they feel that they need to uphold, um, you know, and, and maybe haven't always, I suppose. I mean, that's hard. It's hard to always always uphold that, that high standard, but they're doing a really good job of, uh, of prioritizing, hey, we, you know, if we're gonna play great defense, and that's our, that's our intent, um, that group needs to play great. And that's not always, like I've said a couple times, reflected in the, any kind of personal stats, but ultimately, when you can hold a team down, um, you know, I, you know, near 100 yards rushing, near a, you know, 100 yards passing. That's a pretty good day at the uh, job for that group in particular. And you mentioned how sometimes when Portland State can get going, but they have some really electric players, especially offensively. The quarterback is really, really athletic, and, and they have some receivers too. So, how important is it to not let them find rhythm on Saturday? Oh, it's critical. You know. Um, I think the mode of what they want to do is stay ahead of the chains. Uh, you know, they're right now, I think they, they passed us as far as uh, third down production right now in the league, uh, four games in. Um, and that's, I'm sure, a product of just the down and distances more than it is anything. Um, you know, they're, they're run oriented. Um, doesn't mean they can't pass, doesn't mean they don't have capable, but they want to they want to be in that mode. They want to keep you guessing. Um, so it's you know discipline, tackling. Um, those two things are, are going to be uh, critical. You know it's it's one thing to have the discipline and be in the right spot, but if you can't get them down, then what good is it? Um, I thought on Saturday, watching the film, they they broke a number of tackles. You know a number of those big plays. It wasn't because Cal Poly didn't have someone someone there. And then you talk about the quarterback, his ability to go the distance is there. Um, you know, it's a little bit different animal as far as the quarterback run game goes and the quarterback's ability to run the football than we, we faced this past week. Um, and, and we're gonna have to be ready for that. Um, really the past couple weeks, you know, going back to South Dakota State, we haven't faced a you know, quarterback that was really a run threat, um, but he absolutely is. Sort of the arc of a season, turning the page no matter what happened the previous week. How do you feel about your team done so far with that? And how important is that now by coming back home to Northern Brisket? Well, it's a constant reminder. Um, I, I know that. You know, you, you finish up, uh, you play on the evening uh, on Saturday, get home late. Um, you know, I, I believe in what we do. We give our guys off Sunday, and you hope that that allows for a some decompression, uh, some reality checks, those type of things. We watched the film on Monday morning and, you know, really want to be able to put that previous game behind us, uh, the good and the bad. And we go right back on the field, we correct some things. So, you know, uh, but yeah, you constantly reminding you guys that that game we just had really has nothing to do with this next game. You can build off it for sure. Um, but, you know, you have to go back to work and regardless of who you play, 
Um, you got to get ready to go. And that doesn't happen just by showing up on Saturday. It's, it's by flipping the, turning the page, I guess, on, on Monday. Um, and we preach to that every week. And I think we got a, a group of, you know, older guys, fifth and sixth year guys that um, have heard that, you know, that same uh, message through the last couple years. And, you know, if, you know, I task them, I, I guess as much as anything, if you feel like someone's, you know, not preparing the way they need to prepare, you know, full, full right to, to get on them for that. But more so, let's encourage those younger guys of what each week needs to look like, what the process needs to look like each week, what the preparations so that you don't just plan on showing up on Saturday um, and just relying on talent alone.